Hi, my name is Kelly Buchanan, and I'm one of the educators at Owen Public School in the kindergarten department. I'm glad that you're here with us today. Um, during today's meeting, we're going to be talking about our curriculum philosophy, also what a typical school day looks like. We'll talk about what to wear to kindergarten, what to send to kindergarten, uh, food at kindergarten, as well as how to get your child ready for school and what they need to know before starting kindergarten. We'll also talk a little bit about what the first day of school will look like. So let's start with our curriculum philosophy. We want children to feel safe, happy, and proud of themselves and their work. We encourage group activities so that they can identify and use social skills in play and other areas. We'll help them learn how to problem solve um, in social situations and how to self-regulate when they're working independently. We do our work in many ways and they almost all look like play. Our hands-on inquiry-based program will encourage independence, self-regulation, and a willingness to take responsibility for their learning and other activities. What does a typical day in kindergarten look like? Well, usually it starts with you dropping off your child in our kindergarten yard. At 9 a.m., our kindergarten yard is supervised by teachers, um, early childhood educators, and special needs assistants. And once your child goes into that yard, you don't follow them in. Once we're at the gate, we make sure that there's no grown-ups in there so that we don't have to worry about stranger danger. And the teachers will supervise them as they're in their little groups. And then when the bell rings, they line up into their lines and in they go with their teachers. Once they're in the classroom, they usually have a morning meeting. There's announcements in O Canada and usually some mini lessons. And then they break off into their little play groups. So while they're playing, they are learning. That is the way we learn in kindergarten. During the day, they'll also have an opportunity for maybe music, gym, drama, a STEAM class and they'll do that with a specialty teacher. They also have a snack time in the morning and the afternoon. And in the middle of the day, we have lunch, which has two parts, a uh, eating part and a play part. So we're very busy during the day and our day ends at 325 with a kindergarten soft dismissal. That means that at 325, our children are all ready to go home and you can pick them up from there. And then you have time to move around to other doors of the school to pick up your older children. Or if you have only one child to pick up, you pick up your child and off you go. Perfect. Um, let's talk about what to wear to school. So in kindergarten, we move our bodies all day. It's a very active program. So wearing clothes that like stretch, breathe, and are easy to move in are important. Like skinny jeans and things like that that are just like a really tight and stiff don't really make us feel comfortable when we're seeing crisscross applesauce or we're doing like alphabet yoga. So we wanna make sure that the children are able to easily move. Also make it something that's easy for you to wash because we play in water tables and mud tables and we paint and we have fun. So when we get fun, or sorry, when we have fun, we sometimes get dirty. And so we wanna make sure that the kids are comfortable knowing that if they get something on their clothes that they won't be in trouble at home because we want them to engage and explore with materials. Um, for every day in kindergarten, there's also outdoor playtime. So you have to make sure that your child has clothing for the outdoors. So if it is raining, we like them to have rain boots and a raincoat. If it is cool to have a jacket, and if it's quite cool, they might need a hat and mittens. If your child has really floppy fingers, which happens, if you send us the little stretch mittens and it takes like one adult helping them put each finger into the glove, that is not a good choice of them for school. So try to find them like a little mitten that they can wear or something that's easy for them to pop on independently. When it comes time for winter wear, they will need snow pants that they can put on over their school clothes and you can practice with them to get that independent. We're always happy to help with zippers and eventually kids graduate to the zipper club, which means they can do up their own zipper and help a friend. Um, and they'll also need a hat mitts and a neck warmer for uh, school when it's winter. Make sure that it's not a scarf because scarves can pose a strangulation hazard and so we wouldn't let them on equipment and stuff and no swings if they're wearing a scarf at school. When they come to school the first day, please send your child with a pair of running shoes. So these aren't the shoes that they're wearing on their feet when they arrive at school, these will be in their backpacks. So the shoes should have a Velcro closure or stretchy laces, but something your child can put on independently and inside here should be a label with their name on it. 
thank you very much. So once those shoes come to school, they will stay there unless they become too small. And then we send them home and say, hey, they grew out of their shoes. It's time for a new pair of school shoes. So let's talk about what else they need for school. When they come to school, they need a full size backpack, not one of those tiny, cute kindergarten backpacks, but a big one. This is actually my daughter's from junior kindergarten. We got it at Costco. It is humongous. It has gone through the wash more times than I can count and it still pretty much looks new. So a big backpack and inside that big backpack on your first day will go your Velcro shoes that will come to school and then stay. They are also going to need a change of clothes for school. Now these aren't for um, every day. It will just be, it comes the first day of school and then it stays at school. In the change of clothes bag, please find a Ziploc bag, label it with your child's name, and then add a shirt, a pair of underpants, shorts, and two pairs of socks. And those just can go in the bag. And then your child, in case they have a toileting accident or they manage to land in a puddle and get soaked all the way through, they have clothes they can easily put on. If it's a nice, big Ziploc bag, then they can also fit their soiled clothes into it and then we can send it home to you like this. I like to put them in a shirt that I will remember. So if my child comes home wearing this shirt, I go, oh my goodness, I bet there's something uh, wet and soggy in your bag that I need to take care of. So that bag of clothes needs to go into that big backpack on the first day. And then the teachers will take it out and we have a spot for it in our classroom. So that goes in. The other thing they're going to need to bring to school every day is a reusable water bottle. It should be labeled with your child's uh, name on it and it should be something that if they knock it over, won't spill. So I kind of like these ones. It's like a touch button thing and my child can pop it up and she's got the little spout to drink from and it works really well for us. Whatever water bottle works for you is great and it will be sent home each day in your child's backpack so you can wash it, disinfect it and send it back the next day. Your child only needs one water bottle for the day. Um, if it gets empty, like if they drink it all, we have water bottle refilling areas so they can refill it with nice fresh water so you don't have to worry about sending multiple water bottles in a day. Okay, the other thing they're going to need is a lunch bag. Now, finding a nice big lunch bag is preferred because their lunch and two different snacks need to fit inside here. So let me show you my lunch bag. Um, I quite like these little containers. They have really easy latches on them. You'll also know I have labeled the front of my child's container and the back because once it's apart and loose in the classroom, it can be hard to track everyone's back together. So I've got his doubly labeled container and this is great because I can put some strawberries here and some goldfish here and he's got two little snacks for the morning and it's all in one container and that can fit in his lunch bag. For lunch, you're welcome to send whatever your type of food you would like. My daughter tends to like pasta, so I tend to give her this, and I have also labeled the top and bottom for her, so she'll have that in her lunch bag. With her pasta, she might want some fruit and veggies, so I can add another one of these containers. And then for afternoon snack, one more little container. Um, if you put every single thing in a separate container, it can make it really hard for them at snack. If you've sent like some goldfish, some cheese, some veggies for them to open three containers, but something like this that has sections is nice because they open one and they've got it all in there. Um, this is a nice big lunch container so I can fit everything into it because it has to have that one snack, two snack, lunch, lunch. You'll also need to send if they need a fork or a spoon that needs to come to school in there as well. So there's their lunch and that goes into the backpack as well. Now you might say, but I can fit all that in a small backpack, Mrs. Buchanan. You might be able to, but we also send home things like special crafts that we make each day. And there also might be big library books. So between that, a big backpack is best. We promise to never fill it with bricks so that your child doesn't tip over, but a big backpack makes it easy for them to independently pack their own bag at the end of the school day. So we're asking for that. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about lunches. In their lunches, we just have to make sure that it is nut free. 
We try to keep Owen Public School completely nut free to keep our anaphylaxis children safe. So please check your products. Like sometimes there's granola bars that you've been eating for years and you don't realize they have nut products in them. Please double check everything before you send it to school. We just want to make sure that everyone has a great safe experience at school. All right, your role as parents. Some people want to know what can I do to make sure that my child is ready to learn at kindergarten? Well, the most important thing is for you to communicate with your child. So speaking to your child in your first language prepares them to learn in other languages. So even if English is not your first language, just talking to your child in your first language will help prepare them to learn English at school with us. So speaking to your child, reading to your child every night, Bedtime stories is the best place for kids to cuddle up and learn. So if you can do bedtime stories with your child, then that will help prepare them to be a good listener, to be used to listening to and looking at text. And we would really appreciate that. Now, if you want to be a superstar parent and you want to teach your child to recognize what their name looks like, we would love that. But more specifically, instead of teaching them all capitals like this that says Emily, if you can teach them that it's a capital with lowercase letters, even better, because that's how the teachers are going to write it. So if they come into school and they're looking for this and they don't see it anywhere, they're going to say, but my name isn't anywhere. We want them to look, recognize it like that. All right. So that is my little, if you want to help the teacher tip, they don't have to know how to write it yet, but if they could look and say, that looks like my name, that's really helpful for us. The other things your child really needs to know before kindergarten is how to use the bathroom independently. So by being potty trained, we mean they need to know when they have to go to the bathroom. They have to be able to go into the bathroom, take down their own clothing, sit themselves in the potty, use it, do their own wiping, put their clothes back on and wash their hands. So it's a lot of steps. So it's great if you could practice it over the summer. They also should know how to feed themselves. So sometimes we don't realize as parents how much we help at mealtime. So maybe having some practices where you pretend that you're like playing school where they have to get their own containers out of their lunch bag and open them up and actually do the eating themselves instead of helping, that would be really, really good for us because sometimes we have kids come to school and we help them open their container and they're just sitting there and you're like, what are you waiting for? It's snack time. And they're like, but no one's feeding me. So make sure that your child has had lots of practice eating independently. Um, if you have time to get your child to a primary care physician to have their eyes and ears tested, that would also be wonderful to be prepared for kindergarten. So let's talk about the first day of school. We're really excited that this year for the first day of school, Instead of it being a full day of school, instead we are offering a kindergarten orientation session for both parents and children. So you'll be receiving an email with your orientation appointment time. During your appointment, you'll get to meet the teachers, you'll get to see your classroom, find out where you get to hang your backpack, where the water fountain is, where to find the bathroom, where to line up on the first day of school, where your family will drop you off, where you're going to get picked up, all those things that you might worry about that you don't know, you're gonna find out on that day when you're still with your family. So it's going to be a really nice way to transition to kindergarten and coming to school. After the kindergarten orientation day, your first full day will be September 10th if you're a senior kindergarten student. And if you're a junior kindergarten student, you'll be starting on Monday, September the 13th. So everyone's gonna get a chance to come in, meet some friends, and then you'll have your first full day after you've had a chance to think and talk about that with your families. All right, well, that brings us to the end of uh, everything you need to know to get ready for kindergarten at Owen Public School. If you have any questions, we will have a question and answer period coming up. And you are also welcome to email us and we will include that information in this email that this video is attached to. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Bye. See you in kindergarten.